Hi, John with MapTools.com, here to show you how to work with the three north references used in land navigation. The magnetic needle in your compass aligns with the Earth's magnetic field, so it points to the magnetic north pole, or magnetic north. It's common for the orienting arrow on your compass to point to north, or zero degrees, on the compass dial. When this is the case, your compass measurements are made relative to magnetic north and are called magnetic bearings. True north is defined by the Earth's axes of rotation. It's visually apparent in nature by the fixed location of the north star in the northern hemisphere's night sky. Lines of longitude are all true north lines. The magnetic pole is not located at the true north pole. With the two poles in different locations, lines drawn to them from most points on Earth will have an angle between them. This angle is known as the magnetic declination, or magnetic variance. From some locations, the magnetic pole is to the east of the true pole, and from others, the magnetic pole will be west of the true pole. And from a few locations, the two poles are aligned and there is no difference between true and magnetic north. Here's a map of North America with lines showing equal values of magnetic declination. To further complicate magnetic declination, the physical location of the Earth's magnetic poles changes over time. So declination values also change over time. Changes of a degree or two every 10 years are common. The values shown on the diagram in your, on your map may be out of date. It's important to use the correct value for your location and current date. There are several ways to determine a current declination value for your location. Usually, you can find the information on a declination diagram printed on the map. But remember, if your map is really old, the declination will be out of date. Both diagrams shown here are more than 20 years old, so you should expect the declination to be several degrees different. For land navigation purposes, it's okay to round the declination to the nearest degree. Round up when the fractional part is half a degree or more, or when it's more than 30 minutes. We would round both of these diagrams to 16 degrees. If you have internet access, a search engine query on declination calculator should reveal one or more online calculators. Here's one based in the United States run by the National Geophysical Data Center. We entered the latitude and longitude values for our current location along with the current date. The calculator informed us that the current declination here is 13.66 degrees east and that it changes by nine hundredths of a degree to the west each year. Round the declination up to 14 degrees and think of the change as about a degree every 10 years. The software in your GPS can calculate the declination for your current location. How to find the value will vary by model. Try looking in the setup screens for headings. Finally, you can compare bearings between two known locations. Take the bearing in the field with your compass and then measure the bearing on your map relative to true north. The difference between the bearings is the current declination. There's one more north reference that you need to know about. When we impose a flat rectangular grid onto the round surface of the Earth, the grid lines only line up with true north at the center of the grid. To either side of the center, there will be a slight angle between the grid lines and the true north longitude lines. The further away from the equator and from the center of the grid, the bigger the angle. Most rectangular coordinate grids are divided into zones. Each zone is applied to a narrow strip of longitude and does not extend all the way to the poles. This keeps the angles between grid north and true north to less than about three degrees in the worst cases. The main reason grid north is important to land navigators is that many of our maps have the grid lines printed on them, and they make a convenient reference for plotting bearings on the map. Sometimes you need to convert from one north reference to another. In this example, we cite a magnetic bearing with our compass and get a bearing of 56 degrees magnetic. We'd like to plot that bearing onto our map, which has lots of grid lines printed on it. But to plot using the grid lines, we need to convert the bearing to grid north. There are two key pieces to the conversion. First, we need to figure out the angle between the two north references we're using. Let's look at the declination diagram for this example. If we look at the diagram on the map, we see that magnetic north is 14 degrees east of true north, and grid north is 1 degree west of true north. 
But what we need to know is the angle between magnetic north and grid north. Looking at the diagram, we see that it would be 15 degrees. That's the angle from grid to true, plus the angle from true to magnetic. If grid north were on the other side of true north, the angle from grid to magnetic would be the 14 degrees from magnetic to true, less the 1 degree from true to grid, or 13 degrees. Let's go back to our original declination diagram with an angle of 15 degrees and continue the conversion. The important step to visualizing how to do the conversion is to draw the bearing information we started with onto the diagram. We have sighted a line to pointy peak that's 56 degrees from magnetic north. We're not going to actually measure any of the angles on the diagram, so you don't need to get the pointy peak bearing exact, just get it in the correct location relative to the north references. The answer we are seeking is the angle between pointy peak and grid north. Looking at the diagram, start at the line to pointy peak and work backwards to the north reference we are seeking. The angle from pointy peak to magnetic north is 56 degrees, but we need to add 15 more degrees to reach grid north. Now we have the second key piece of information we need to do the conversion. We know that we need to add the 15 degree angle between grid and magnetic to our magnetic bearing in order to convert it to a grid north bearing. So we take our 56 degree magnetic bearing and we add the 15 degree angle between grid and magnetic north to get the result of 71 degrees grid. Now we are ready to plot the bearing onto our map. We set 71 degrees into our compass dial and then we move the entire compass so that the orienting lines are parallel to the grid lines and the edge of the compass touches the location where we took the bearing. Draw a line along the edge of the compass and we see that it passes through pointy peak. Now let's make a simple recipe for converting between the north references at our current location. To convert from magnetic north to grid north, add 15 degrees. But what about the reverse conversion from grid no to magnetic north? Let's look at the diagram again. If we look at the angle from grid north to pointy peak, we see that it's bigger than the angle from magnetic north to pointy peak. It's bigger by 15 degrees. So, to convert from grid north to magnetic north, subtract 15 degrees. Occasionally, when you have a small bearing, or one that's close to 360 degrees, the conversion will result in an answer that is less than zero or larger than 360 degrees. For answers that are less than 360 degrees, add 360 degrees to the answer. For answers that are larger than 360 degrees, subtract 360 degrees from the answer. I don't recommend that you draw the diagram every time you need to do a conversion, but if you get confused whether to add or subtract, or you move to a location with a different declination, you should return to the diagram to figure out the solution. In the next video in the series, there are several additional north reference conversions and their solutions. I'll lay out the problem and then put the pause symbol on the screen. If you want to solve the problem on your own, pause the video using your video player's controls, do the conversion, and then continue playing the video to see the solution. The problems will explore different combinations of grid and magnetic north being on either side of true north. They'll also get a bit trickier as we progress. Once you feel that you have the hang of this, I'd also suggest that you dig out a map of your local area and try a few north reference conversions using your declination values. I hope you found this tutorial useful. The next video in this series has five more north reference exercises. If you are already comfortable converting between different north references, you can skip these exercises. You can find additional videos, the written script for this video, and downloadable exercises in the Tutorials section of the MapTools.com website. MapTools.com is a leading manufacturer of coordinate plotting tools and a great source of information for land navigation instructors and their students. Thanks for watching.